all these co well, not all these co-ops. There, there have never been that many. There's yeah, you guys, like when, when I would come here in the 80s, uh, this was a very on-the-edge neighborhood. I mean, there was, this was not an arty neighborhood at all. It's this was like artists kind of finding, you know, uh, a, uh, a pioneering a new neighborhood and, and finding uh, cheap rentals. This is something that doesn't really happen anymore, really, but, uh, uh, because everything's gotten so expensive. But this would be a real cheap place, and you'd come out here, and there would be this wild kind of party atmosphere. But at the same time, you know, people from the Denver Art Museum uh, would be coming in, and, and notable collectors in town, and would be coming in and buying things. Uh, and some of the biggest names in Denver Art really had shows here. I, a lot of them were, were involved with us, which is real nice. Dale Chisholm, for one. Uh, but uh, yeah, there was a group of us at Metro, and we were all getting out of Metro at the same time. And it, we had no, there, there were like two, maybe three galleries in town that dealt with good contemporary art. And we figured, hell, what, how are we ever gonna get into those, forget that. Uh, so a friend of mine had a studio he was letting go. And I said, wait, let's use it, open a uh, co-op gallery. So that, that's how we got started. That was the summer of 79. Then that, that place fell away. And then we finally found a spot that we opened on January 1st, 1980. This was at 16th and Market, right on where the mall is now. The buildings are gone, <coughs> but it was uh, two 12 by 20 rooms. <coughs> two 12 by 20 rooms, I think they were 100 bucks a month. Yeah, 50 bucks for each room. There were a little office, office spaces and there was a connecting door. So that was our first stop, our first stop, yeah. Then we moved up the hill to 15th and Central, which overlooked downtown at the time, uh, in 1st of 81. And we were there for about a year, then we moved here in February of 82. So that's all our history uh, as far as the buildings. Um, the group of students, we were kind of like-minded, and there, was, there were eight of us, actually. For opening night, one guy never showed, so we started with seven of us. And uh, that was enough, what was that, 15 bucks a month probably at that time, for 100 bucks a month room. Uh, so that's how we got started. And then uh, shortly thereafter, people started leaving, and we brought in new members. And uh, we probably, I don't know, we could have had a, a two, two week shows, we could have had uh, quite a few members in those days. And, and we, sometimes we had one guy in one room and one guy in the other room. So two solo shows at the same time. I want to just have the, the whole idea of the two-week show, and now this is the three-week show that you have. The other galleries, the other co-ops we went to had four-week shows. And just to give you an idea from, you know, coming from the press and how the press works, that if you have a two-week show, you have absolutely no chance of getting press coverage. You can get web coverage, but you can't get press coverage because the deadlines are already... Ah, we got press. So, you know, pardon? We got press for two weeks. <coughs> you got press, but they, they wouldn't have been had to be getting a preview, or they would have had to go in late. Like, oh, I could I never, <coughs> three week shows is the minimum I could ever do, because you would open on a Friday, my deadline is the previous Wednesday for the next week. Mm -hmm. Then if you close the following Friday, you couldn't, uh, there would be no space to do it. And, and so three weeks is the I And the News and the Post had a little more leeway than yes. weekly. Right. So right. the News and the Post, which was nice from the day that we had two papers. But anyway. Um, so no, I, I kind of argued about going three weeks in the weekend, but it's good. It was a good call. Uh, the edge, uh, they liked four weeks because of that particular reason. Uh, some people say if you put so much work into a show, you want more time. But um, I know. Three weeks is enough time to get in and see a show, I think. So we'll keep it going that way. That way we can afford to keep our dues lower also. Yeah. You know, the this more shows you have, the more dues you have to charge your members to get a yearly show. Some of them do a show every two years, some of them do a show every 18 months. We do one yearly. One of the biggest co-op rooms in town, 
one of the cheapest memberships in town, so I, I kind of proud of that. And a solid name, really, a, a, a built-up reputation over decades that people know what Pirate is, yeah. right? Oh yeah, and uh, according to some people, you know, we kind of <laughs> make Saturday Night Live keep coming, you know, and you ebb and, ebb and you flow, but that's okay. Uh, people come and go, and get different members. We're picky about who we choose. We never ever pick someone because we have openings and we need the money. Never. That's that's quality control is something because then there goes a reputation out the window. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we're picking, we're picking quality people. Not everybody's going to agree with that, of course. Uh, so we have a three-week show once a year. We also share a group show once a year. That's what you're paying for your dues. Plus, you're being a part of the, this co-op. And I, what I've always looked at, too, is our money, dues money, is <laughs> a gift to the city. Being pompous here, but I think we put on some damn interesting shows. And uh, if people like it, they come. If they don't, they don't. So we, we, sure, we sure know we have a tiny audience. People that are interested in contemporary art, I guess one and a half, two percent maybe, of the population. Yeah. I don't know, something like that. And then the people that actually buy and collect, <laughs> they're, they're even so much tiny. So we, we, we do it for the, hopefully for the, the love of what we're making, and then we have an op opportunity to share it with people and get feedback and have sales. We do have sales, so uh, everything in here, I guess, is for sale, but it's, that's not an important thing. People ask us about frames and sales and commissions. And so we don't care if you frame it. <laughs> we don't care if you sell it because we're not gonna. You're gonna get all the money anyway. We we write it the way we want to be treated in a perfect world as far as an art gallery. Instead of the gallery getting fifty percent, artist getting fifty percent, the artist gets a hundred percent. But then we're an artist-run space, so it's a lot different than a commercial gallery that has to pay their bill some way. Unless they're a philanthropist and they're rich or something, then they can do it like uh, Laura Mirage. That's a good example of a rich gallery person. I wish I had half the money. But, uh, Ten percent. Ten percent of, of half. We're going to go to uh, red line. I think she's a 